Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 24th of January 2021 and we're publishing the 8th episode in our Bitcoin vs Gold and Silver series which is published every Sunday. Now I appreciate not everyone's interested in Bitcoin but it is a competitor to Gold and Silver and so we encourage you to listen to this series so you can at least appreciate a competitor resource to our much cherished belief in precious metals. In today's episode we look at the fact that Bitcoin prices have dipped yet again and ask is this just a temporary pullback or will it fall even further? And also what effect does the lack of computer chips have on the underlying production and price of Bitcoins? So let's take a look. Now before we go on to today's subject, just a quick recap. We've listed episodes 1 to 7 in our series in the description box below. In episode 1 we explained why we launched this series and why some people find Bitcoin so attractive. In episode 2 we confirmed the equity market was worth then approximately $85 trillion, the tradable gold market worth $1.5 trillion and the tradable silver market just $60 billion. Since the series began a little over almost eight, two months ago now, the market capitalization of Bitcoin was around $350 billion. Today that capitalization had risen to as high as $750 and, that, and has now fallen back to something in the region of around $550 to $600 billion. In episode 3 we highlighted a non-exhaustive list of the disadvantages of Bitcoin which are similar to other cryptocurrencies. In episode 4 we highlighted that former White House Communications Director and founder and co-owner of hedge fund Skybridge Capital had launched a brand new Bitcoin fund and the reasons for doing it. And in episode 5 the intrinsic value of gold and silver compared with the intrinsic value of Bitcoin. Episode 6 we looked at a number of YouTube and Google influencers who've used Bitcoin's rise as both clickbait and an investment opportunity. And in last week's episode, episode 7, we looked at some of the commentary which followed a dramatic $11,000 fall in the price of Bitcoin. And yet support from some quarters stating that this was an expected and temporary pullback. So going on to today's subject. Two weeks ago we saw Bitcoin prices tumble to the point at which at their high they touched $41,113 and at its lowest point then $30,142 a fall of almost $11,000 in just one day. This past week we've seen further declines to the low side with Bitcoin having fallen to as low as $28,785 but currently it stands a little higher at 32603 you see, this is the fear of Bitcoin, as we've mentioned in previous episodes, that the volatility in its price does neither make it an ideal currency nor financial asset that one can depend on, but more of an almost speculative gamble. Having seen prices being so volatile to the downside these past two weeks have set both YouTube and social media alight, with people on both sides of the fence arguing either a bullish or on the other side a bearish or negative case for Bitcoin. Let's just take a brief look from an excerpt from Coindesk which is an independent operating subsidiary of Digital Currency Group which itself invests in cryptocurrencies and blockchain startups. It has something interesting to say but it is relatively brief. Coindesk article headline Bitcoin faces further losses before rally restarts, say analysts. This is dated 22nd of January 2021. Despite a bounce earlier on Friday, Bitcoin may yet see further losses in the near term. Bitcoin shorter term price woes are likely not over yet, analysts say, with one predicting a further decline to $26,000. The cryptocurrency fell by 13% on Thursday in a spot market sell-off, hitting a low of $28,845, 
earlier on Friday, the lowest level since January the 4th. In the hours since, the cryptocurrency has regained some poise to trade back above $31,000. Quote, I'm not sure the low of 28000 seen early Friday is the bottom. Unquote. Ki Yong Yu, CEO of Blockchain Analytics, firm CryptoQuant, told Coindesk. He highlighted a negative Coinbase premium as evidence of weak dip demand from large investors. Bitcoin broke short-term support on Thursday, and while the market is trading positively now, we may see lows down to the $26,000 mark in the coming weeks. Matthew Dibb, co-founder and COO of Singapore-based Stack Funds, told Coindesk over WhatsApp. After failing multiple times to establish a foothold below $32,000 earlier this month, sellers finally secured a daily close below that level on Thursday, coupled with a fallout of a contracting triangle that indicates the path of least resistance is to the downside. Bitcoin's recovery has already been capped by the former support turned resistance of $32,000. A move above 35000 is needed to abort the bearish view, according to popular Twitter trader Cred. That level could be put to the test as the derivative market is more relaxed now, and we have seen some good buying interest around $30,000, Patrick Heusser, head of trading at Swiss-based crypto broker AG, said. The perpetual funding rates and futures premiums are reverting towards their mean from elevated levels observed earlier this month, when Bitcoin was trading near record highs. The perpetual's funding rate, or the cost of holding long positions, is currently seen at 0.008%, down significantly from the high of nearly 0.10% observed on January 19th, according to data provider Glassnode. Down but not out. Despite the latest decline, Bitcoin is still up 6% on a year-to-year -year basis and up over 35% from the price of $23,000 seen precisely a month ago. Analysts remain optimistic about the cryptocurrency's long-term prospects. Bitcoin has taken a beating this week amid renewed regulatory concerns and bearish comments by prominent investors. So as we can see, some are predicting perhaps a price continuance fall to perhaps as low as $26,000. But as we've seen often with precious metals, whenever prices have fallen, there are advocates on both sides of the argument, either predicting even lower prices, or more generally, those predicting even higher prices. Our assessment for the moment is that Bitcoin will consolidate and make another stride higher. How high it will go is difficult to tell at this stage, but we're not convinced that we've seen the end of new Bitcoin highs. There is simply too much institutional as well as private investor interest. And frankly, it's only really just begun to attract that interest, at least to any serious degree, with potentially a lot more to come. Now, we also saw an interesting article published by Reuters, which addresses a side which perhaps many of us haven't considered. And this is the effect that computer chips, or lack of them, can have on the Bitcoin supply and price, at least short term. Let's take a look at this, it's very short. Reuters article dated January 22nd, 2021. Global chip shortage hits China's Bitcoin mining sector. A global chip shortage is choking the production of machines used to mine Bitcoin, a sector dominated by China, sending prices of the computer equipment soaring as a surge in the cryptocurrency drives demand. The scramble is pricing out smaller miners and accelerating an industry consolidation that could see deep-pocketed players, many outside China, profit from the Bitcoin bull run. Bitcoin mining is closely watched by traders and users of the world's largest cryptocurrency as the amount of Bitcoin they make and sell into the market affects its supply and price. Trading around $32,000 on Friday, Bitcoin is down 20% from 
from the record highs it struck two weeks ago, but still up some 700% from its March low of $3,850. There are not enough chips to support the production of mining rigs, said Alex Ayo, Vice President of InnoSilicon, a chip designer and major provider of mining equipment. Bitcoin miners use increasingly powerful, specially designed computer equipment, or rigs, to verify Bitcoin transactions in a process which produces newly minted Bitcoins. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co. and Samsung Electronics Co., the main producers of specially designed chips used in mining rigs, would also prioritize supplies to sectors such as consumer electronics, whose chip demand is seen as more stable, AO said. The global chip shortage is disrupting production across a global array of products, including automobiles, laptops and mobile phones. Mining's profitability depends on Bitcoin's price, the cost of electricity used to power the rig, the rig's efficiency and how much computing power is needed to mine a Bitcoin. Demand for rigs has boomed as Bitcoin prices soared, said Gordon Chen, co-founder of Cryptocurrency Asset Manager and miner GMR. When gold prices jump, you need more shovels. When milk prices rise, you want more cows. Lei Tong, Managing Director of Financial Services at Baybell Finance, which lends to miners, said that almost all major miners are scouring the market for rigs and they're willing to pay high prices for second-hand machines. Purchase volumes from North America have been huge, squeezing supply in China, he said, adding that many miners are placing orders for products that can only be delivered in August and September. Most of the products of Bitmain, one of the biggest rig makers in China, sold out, according to the company's website. Sales manager at Yangsu Heifangxin Technology, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, a rig merchant, said prices on the second-hand market have jumped 50 to 60% over the past year, while prices of new equipment more than doubled. High-end second-hand mining machines were quoted around $5,000. It's natural if you look at how much Bitcoin has risen, said the manager, who identified himself by his surname, Li. A cryptocurrency surge is affecting who is able to mine. The increasing cost of investment is eliminating small players, said Raymond Yuan, founder of Atlas Mining, which owns one of China's biggest mining businesses. Institutional investors benefit from both large-scale and proficiency in management, whereas retail investors who couldn't keep up will be weeded out, said Yuan whose company's invested over $500 million in cryptocurrency mining and plans to keep investing heavily. Many of the larger players growing their mining operations are based outside of China, often in North America and the Middle East. So, with this heavy commitment and demand for such rigs and machines, it certainly does suggest that the Bitcoin rampage is still likely to continue and that it's not just a short-term fad. What do you think? Do you agree that Bitcoin could indeed fall to $26,000 or even lower, and then rise to $50,000 soon, and then on to perhaps 100000 or even a million, as some suggest? Or do you think it will perhaps be closed down well before then? Do share your thoughts. And meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't already done so, do subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, Please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.